And a good day, all of you. John Henderson Pierre, the Beverage Ramble, back again with you. Another rambling edition. Been a couple of days, but understandable. A lot going on. Things happen. Life, right? So today we're looking at Dragon Stout. Mmm. Been wanting to try this for some time now. Made by the company of the I'm gonna butcher the name, forgive me, folks. The Sanos and Giddis Limited. Uh, based in Kingston, Jamaica. This is a very popular beer. I've been wanting to try this for a long, long time. And finally I did. It was about a decent price. I saw it was $9.99. A little high for a six for a sixer of this, but it was. Uh, gets an 80 score on Beer Advocate. Uh, Untap gives it a 3.35 out of 5. So I guess that's good. So, yeah, forgive me, I got a little, I, my smoke detector is beeping, I got to replace the battery. Seems it happens every time I do a video. Mm. Smoke detector, beep beep. So, here's what the beer looks like. <sighs> nice little, nice little head up top, as you can see right over here. Pretty good. So this is a beer very popular in Jamaica. That they consider this, I think it's the same company that also produces Red Stripe. And looking at uh, some of the uh, info on this, they consider this as um, the, the little brother, darker, stronger brother. So produced exclusively in Jamaica. Of course, it's imported, I believe, through the same folks that import the import red that it, that does import Red Stripe. Supported by United States Beverage LLC, Stanford, Connecticut. So, so I'm gonna probably look on that website to see more info on that. But so 7.5 percent. So I guess it's a I say Euro European strong stout water. So hmm, strong barley. Definitely, there's a little hint of a caramel. Roasted barley, but a little bit of a caramel in this uh, in this beverage. Definitely some chocolate. Well, so here we go. A little caramel. Definitely some chocolate in this. Definitely a strong roasted ball. It's amazing. I was never able to find this beer when I was in Mo uh, when I lived in Mobile. Well, then again, I knew of this beer, but I guess again, everything is all about numbers and economics and um, and the city you live in. Um, in terms of diverse, you know, again, if you're in a very diverse neighborhood, a very diverse community, you get more things. Be able to find more things than you can in other places and um, I yeah I mean it just is a fact because I mean we had some beers that were able when I lived in Mobile there were some beers we were able to I was able to get you know obviously restaurant was very much there Carib beer a few other beers such as that um, but mostly you were stuck with whatever you can get your hands on and that was it, you know, there was no such thing as getting uh, some of the, uh, like, so, like, for Famoso, it took a while to finally get that, unless you lived in Baldwin County, it was a very strong, heavy Hispanic population, but Famoso, um, uh, Superior, um, you know, Tona, all these different beer, beer names that I'm, I'm throwing out there. Um, even some of the Brooklyn Lager beers. None of that. It was just kind of very hard to come by. Whatever you had, you get the usual names, usual things. And then, of course, things from whether from some stuff we trickle down from Georgia and you know, whatever from Florida. But it was very little, much of anything you can really try. It was Corona, Budweiser, whatever, you, whatever that was there. And that was pretty much it. So 
And every time I would go home, I would see this. And I'd be debating when I look at it because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm visiting my folks, you know. And beer prices in New Jersey. Um, unfortunately, it's not as reasonable as I thought it was. It's kind of a little bit... Within the top 10, I guess, of beers are expensive because I, I remember buying, bought the Guinness, it was like eleven ninety nine for a six pack of Guinness, and I was like, Ugh. one place was eleven ninety nine, another place it was nine ninety nine. So, anyhow, as far as these sort of stouts, um, beers like this. Yeah, it's seven percent. I mean, it's it's good. Um, it's not it's strong. Uh, I I just took it out of the refrigerator and just come in consume it because you know I didn't know how to drink this beer. Um, stouts are very popular within many of these Caribbean nations. Um, I think we notice we we drink them cold mo majority of the time. Guinness. Mm, which is very popular. You know, you can go to any Caribbean restaurant or a Caribbean bar, tavern I've been to, you know, and of course my dad loves, you know, they tend to drink Guinness cold, where the normal way we drink Guinness, which is cold, but tend to be a, a bit, a bit of a certain temperature, you know, 50, maybe, 45, 50, 50 degrees around there. Not extra, extra cold, you know, so. Um, another thing that we've also done with a lot of these stouts that you can mix it with a drink <laughs> with using car evaporated milk, carnation milk, we like to call it, you know, and mix it in, you add a little sugar to it, and, you know, this is already sweet. We've done it with this, also with Goya Malta, which is a, Mal Malta, which is a kind of a, an al not an alcoholic beverage, but if you look at it, especially the, the company Goya Malta, um, if you look at the bottom, the bottom of the bottle, it would say 0.5% alcohol in it, or 1%. People don't realize that, but it is. And um, people mix it with this and, and whatnot. And it was another beverage, malt beverage, same, similar, but... I don't know. It had it had a little more stronger flavor, and that was like two percent. But for, some, for whatever the reason, it was it was a, it was a silver can. It was in a bottle. I remember when I was working in Plainfield, New Jersey, I would go to the around the corner and, and find it inside the store, and I would buy it a lot. And again, it was 0.5, but it just or one percent, but it just had a sort of I don't know, a strong flavor to it. You know, it may have been out of date. I don't know, but. So, this is good. I mean, um, I wouldn't call it strong, but it has a nice flavor. It has a really a chocolate, a little caramel, also a little taste of brown sugar or molasses, but, you know, it, it's all kind of evenly balanced in this stout, so, um... I guess maybe if I warmed it up, maybe um, this thing has been brewed since 1920 in the, in the country of Jamaica. Hopefully, in my lifetime, pray to the heavens, I will visit that country and just say hi, hi, Mr. Pierre. Welcome to Jamaica. So, but um, overall, it ain't, ain't bad. Um, a coworker work, that works with me at my job mentioned me about moccasin and I guess it's also a stout as well and then also they got the dragon fire stout so um that is at 12 percent. so thankfully I was able to get it and again it was the price you can debate maybe a little bit high maybe less I don't know 9.99 for a sixer I guess you know someone's kind of very cautious about his pennies but I felt that I wanted to do something live a little right live a little try something different mm. So, any event, um, really good, like it, and um, I don't know what's missing in this. I, 
you know, me as our you know you know me I'm very love my Imperials and you know the stronger the better nine and up but this will do so I'm gonna go B plus on this one so this will be an 8.6 8.7 most for the Dragon Stout, very enjoyable. Beer been made since 1920, so try it. You may like it. Mm. Jean Anderson Pierre, the beverage ramble team. You keep on watching as always. Cheers. Live, laugh, and love. Dragon. Dragon Stout. Dragon away. Oh.